Okay, so I'm overdue for some positivity apparently. So here we go. Thanks to one of our resident commenters, Frederator Fredo Richtus, who suggested this week's topic. Incidentally, try saying that sentence three times fast. I'll wait. Today, we're going to be talking about longevity, how you achieve it, and its consequences. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna lie guys, this is gonna be largely a Nintendo-based episode, because it's really a testament to them that when I think of all the series that have lasted from my childhood all the way into my uglier years, that they almost exclusively appear. They really deserve their reputations of masters in their industry. Zelda, Metroid, Kirby, the guy who's definitely not a plumber. All of these are still continuing to this day, and that's not including the ones we hold dear in our hearts and can't honestly believe they haven't made a new game for in so long. But what is it that creates this fondness? Well, let's remember that Nintendo was a thing long before it was a video games company, making toys. And they know what fun means. Mario was a testament to the beauty of simplicity. How do you play? Run, then jump. That's it. The first Legend of Zelda was the first time for so many to understand the potential of games. You wanna go there? You can. Metroid opened the door for a whole genre of platform shooters to come, which I guess sums up how longevity is achieved, impact, and passion. And it's not just Nintendo either. Look at Final Fantasy, Castlevania, Sonic the Hedgehog. The consequences? We need look no further than Pokemon. By no means is Pokemon a failed financial venture. Not now, not then, and not anytime soon. Not by a long shot. But I don't think anyone can deny the rock and the hard place that Nintendo have oddly put themselves into. A new game produced once every couple of years since the franchise's inception in 1996? Not including the spin-off games, card games, and everything else to do with the series. That's incredible work and wonderful understanding of the fans' insatiable desire for more content, Little Jack included. But it's that initial nostalgia, and let's not kid ourselves, that is Nintendo's main advantage in this saturated market that is also slowly hamstringing the series. I haven't played one of these games since 2000. I have no horse in this race. But witnessing the game for myself through my partner's addicted hands has made me appreciate the incredibly difficult spot Nintendo is in. Its customers seem to be equal parts fond nostalgic adults, and especially since the advent that was Pokemon Go, children who've grown up with iPads as a go-to device. The demand for content that changes up the formula is more required than ever, and Nintendo is answering the call. But how long can longevity last with essentially the same old tired formula? No matter how you can customize your trainer or make previous generations of Pokemon more shiny. Oh, he thinks he's people. You are still required to catch Pokemon, train them, and fight them. That's the premise. That's what we expect. I can't help but think of another series that went too much in this direction. Is the future of Pokemon, then, in ditching everything we've known? Everything comfortable and safe about the formula for a new uncharted territory? Some would call that madness, and seemingly un-Nintendo-like. And I would have agreed, until I saw XCOM liked for kids being released and widely adored. And it was a crossover game. This version of Nintendo might just have the chutzpah to make those kind of difficult calls. The question is, will we answer them? I can't wait to find out. G'day guys, Jack in Action here, and thank you once again for watching this episode of Jack Yak. As you no doubt heard, this episode was inspired by the comments that you leave, so be sure to leave a suggestion or any questions in the comments down below. Be sure to drop a like, as it really helps us know if you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, please subscribe as we put out weekly videos of game-related content. That's been it from me, I've been Jack in Action, and I will see you on the internet.